Hello, hello. Today we're going to be making some functional work stickers, either for print or digital planners, such as like when you're using it in GoodNotes or Notability. We're going to be doing this in InDesign and Illustrator with the help of Google Sheets. So I'm going to be doing this using InDesign's data merge feature and Illustrator has its own data merge feature, but it doesn't work quite the same way as Adobe InDesign's. In Illustrator, it's called variables. And when you import your data and it populates your design, what it's going to do instead is just export that as individual images. And I want this to be all in my same Illustrator document. So to do that, we're going to start in InDesign and then move it into Illustrator. Over here in Google Sheets, I have these functional labels stickers, which is what I'm going to be showing you how to make. I want to have a lowercase and an uppercase version. So I'm starting off with lowercase and then we can do the uppercase automatically in InDesign. Row one is our label. This doesn't get put into the data merge. It just tells us what we're working with. So this can be whatever you want it to be. And then all of the others are going to be our stickers. With this, we want to download it as a CSV. So to do that, we go File, Download, and CSV there. If your stickers have commas in them, you're going to want to use a TSV, but keep in mind that the import for that is a little different in Adobe InDesign. With our CSV downloaded, we now want to check to make sure that it's correct. InDesign doesn't like to see any errors in your CSV files, otherwise it just won't do the data merge. So to check it, we're going to right click it, and I'm going to open it with text edit. You can open this with a uh, notepad or something like that if you're on Windows. So what we're really just checking is that there is no extra column along here. And at the bottom, there are no empty rows. InDesign just gets very upset when that happens. And I find that if you've got a file with errors in it and you're trying to correct those errors, but there are still errors each time you try, eventually once your CSV is correct, InDesign will glitch and think that it still has errors. So just keep that in mind. Over in InDesign, we're going to want to get our data merge panel open. To do that, we're going to go Window, then Utilities, and Data Merge. It's going to come up with this panel here. These are just instructions on how to use data merge, but it's really, really easy. So here, we're going to select this button and select Data Source. Then we're going to choose our CSV. If you are working with a TSV, it's going to show up grayed out. So instead of enable all readable documents, you're going to want to swap it to all documents and you're going to want to make sure show import options is ticked. This is because when this dialog box come out, comes out, it's going to be comma and you want it to be tab. So you're going to change that. If you don't have show import options ticked, it just won't work. So we're going to go OK. And there are our work stickers. So now I'm going to start creating the style of the sticker. I'm going to hit T for the type tool. Click and drag to create a text box. And I'm just going to click once here, work stickers, and that will pop it here. I'm going to turn preview on just so I can see what I'm working with. I'm working in the properties panel. If you don't have this, just go window and then properties, but I'm primarily going to be working in the character panel and the paragraph panel. So if you want those up separately, just go down to type in tables. Character is command T or control T and paragraph is command shift T or control shift T. So now I'm just going to stylize it. I want my font to be Operetta, so I'll change that. And I'm going to make this pretty big. The document I'm working with here is 100 by 100 centimeters, just because I want to limit the number of pages that these icons are on. It will just make it easier for me. Right, so we've got this text box here, so now I'm going to style it even more. I'm going to drag out the corners of the frame to make it bigger. And I'm actually also just going to center align it. Now I'm going to mess with the text frame. So Command B or Control B to open text frame options. 
and here we've got our insert spacing. So this is going to give us some padding on the side of our text box, which will be really helpful for us when we're adding a background to it. So for top, I'm going to do one centimeter. Bottom, I'll do one centimeter. And for the left, I'll do three. For the right, I'll also do three. So that's what it looks like. Oops. For vertical justification, I'm going to choose center. So that's going to put it in the center of it. This will depend on the baseline of the font. As you can see, this one is not perfectly centered. So we're going to shift the baseline to counteract that. We can also um, just choose it here if you want, but because I'm going to be doing auto caps, uh, I want to control it myself. For auto sizing, we're going to choose width only and no line breaks here. I also forgot to change the hyphenation in the paragraph panel, so I'll do that now. The reason why we're going to change uh, only the width to auto size and not the height as well is because I'm going to be messing with quite a few things and I don't want the height of it to differ. So to turn off hyphenate, it's just this. If your paragraph panel doesn't look like this, I've just got these three dots here and that expands the options out. So to fit the frame to your text, to the minimum size of your text, you're going to do Command Option C or Control Alt C, and that will just snap your text frame to the minimum size it can be. So this is what our text looks like. And in the character panel, once again, just clicking these three dots to expand this out, I am going to shift my baseline up and I'll need to shift this down once I've got, uh, once I do my all caps. But this is what we're looking at. So now I want to change the color of the background. Over here, we can see that we have two buttons. This is where our color can be changed. This is for the formatting the frame and this is for formatting the text. So if we click this, you'll see that this has changed to a T and it's gone black because our text color is black. But I don't want to edit the text color, I just want to edit the frame color. So I am just going to choose a light kind of peach color. So that's going to be what our sticker looks like. And because we're going to be moving this into Adobe Illustrator, you can do things to it like adding icons or, you know, patterns, anything like that. You can change a lot once we've moved it into Illustrator. So now I want to duplicate this to make my caps version. Hold down Option or Alt and just click and drag on that object and it will duplicate. In the character panel, I'm going to click this button here. This is all caps and you'll see the width adjusted automatically. So now I'm going to shift that baseline again, just put it back down a couple. And that's our sticker done. So now that I've got the design completed, I'm going to want to do our data merge. Back in our data merge panel, I'm going to click this one here. This says create merged document. So we'll click that. We're going to change this from records per document page from single record to multiple records. If you're using data merge to create a planner or something like that, you're going to want to have single page, but because this is just stickers, I want as many stickers on one page as possible. And we can also click preview multiple record layout so we can just see what it will look like. So here we can see the margins of the document and we can also add some spacing between all of our stickers. And for options over here, we don't need to do anything. So when we click OK, it's going to create a new document with our records merged. So you can see we had two pages over here. And that was a really easy way to just generate all of the text for your stickers. Now I'm going to export this as a PDF and we're going to move it into Illustrator. You can copy and paste this. For most things it works, but sometimes some of the things won't copy and paste properly. Illustrator is a natural PDF editor. That's part of its function. So we're going to do it as a PDF. To export this as a PDF, we're just going to go File, Export, 
and we're just going to do Adobe PDF. I'm going to do print, save, and I'll replace this one. So this doesn't matter because what we've got is all vector. The only thing is for the output, I'm going to put no color conversion just to make it easier. With that PDF exported, we're going to want to open this in Adobe Illustrator. So right click this, open with, and then Adobe Illustrator. It's going to ask us how we want to import it. I want all and I don't want them to import as links. So we go OK. And now we have our stickers in Adobe Illustrator. So this is imported, this is imported each page as a mask, but it is also created two artboards for us. Artboard is like your canvas and you can have as many artboards as you need for your sticker set. I've had upwards of 700 before. So we're just going to click release mask here in the properties panel. Once again, for the properties panel, go window and then properties to open it up. Now it's going to be a group, so I'm going to ungroup it, which is Control or Command Shift G. And now I can delete that bounding box. Do the same to this one, release mask, ungroup, and we can delete that. If we go Command Y or Control Y, we can view outline mode. Outline mode is really helpful in Illustrator, but it's also really easy to accidentally enter. What it shows us is our paths unedited with no effects, no fills, no appearance changes, everything. So you'll see here that some of our fonts have outlined. This happens to all of the capital variants of this particular uh, font. So that's okay. All of our actual word stickers have not been outlined. So now what I want to do is move all of these off the artboard. So I'm going to click and drag to select them all. And I can move them off the artboard. These shapes that have been imported from InDesign to Illustrator aren't really recognized as shapes. So you can't just make artboards out of all of these shapes. It's very frustrating. Otherwise, we could create all the artboards in seconds. But creating artboards is still very easy. So the shortcut for artboards is Shift O. And if your toolbar doesn't look the same as mine, that's okay. The shortcuts will all still be the same. It'll still work even if the tool isn't visible in your toolbar. But if you want it to look like mine, just click these three dots down here, click this button at the top, and then change it to advanced. So to add an artboard, you can either double click and that will move the active artboard to um, your sticker or you can click once and that will create a new artboard around the sticker. What's really great about this is the text box and the text itself have now separated in Adobe Illustrator. So we can edit things like the colors very easily. So to edit the colors in your Illustrator document, we just need to duplicate some. So I'm going to hold Option or Alt and click and drag and you can hold Shift to keep it aligned. With those selected, you can go Edit, then Edit Colors and you can go Recolor Artwork. I automatically have the Advanced option set and come up. So um, when you open Recolor Artwork and you see Advanced Dialog, um, this thing, I just have that ticked on. That's all right. So we can double click this and then we can change the color to be whatever we want. So if we wanted it to be a nice pale blue, we can do that. So when you want to export them, it's very easy. And what's great about these stickers is that when you have all your artboards, you can name your artboards and then when you export them as individual files, your artboards will append onto the file name. So this one would be called Untitled 4 Artboard 1. But I can rename that and I can call this Appointment Lowercase. 
And so now when I export this as an image, it's going to be called untitled for appointment lowercase. So to export, we're going to go file, export, and we can either go export for screens or export as. I prefer export for screens because it's got a lot more control than export as does. So I'm going to untick this one just because this is an empty artboard and when it's ticked we get this little warning. So untick that one. You can choose to include bleed but I don't have a bleed so I don't need to. And then here we can export as many formats as we want for these stickers. So one thing that I do to keep the file size low is I limit the colors in my PNG files. To do that, we can click this little setting here. And under PNG 8, we can limit how many colors there are. So this one, there's five, but that's up to you. And so what that means is that the file size will be as small as possible when you export them. So you can export them at whatever scale you want. So let's say I wanted to export them at three times their regular scale. This is going to create a sub subfolder called 3x and we go export artboard. So there we go we can see 3x there and then this is what the sticker looks like. You'll see that it's perfectly sized to the artboards. But what if you want to create some effects on your stickers? We can do that really simply. So let's say we wanted to add a drop shadow to these stickers. I can select this sticker, this background here. You'll see that these aren't grouped. They're completely separate. We could go select, same, and we could go fill color. This will select all of the backgrounds of that same color. And to add a drop shadow in the properties panel, we can go effects, stylize, and drop shadow. And then we could just add one easily there. If we go OK, that's what it looks like. And you can also go effect up here and then stylize the same thing. So now when you add an artboard to your object, it will also wrap around the effect. So that's how you create a lot of stickers very quickly in Adobe InDesign and Adobe Illustrator. If you liked this video, make sure to like and subscribe and make new videos every Tuesday and Friday.